What's going on, everyone? This is the My Aggie Nation podcast, also a lovely video for you viewing on TheEagle.com. Welcome. Welcome to the studio. I'm Travis Brown with The Eagle alongside always Alex Miller. Alex, what's going on, buddy? Oh, you know, just a, just a midweek day in, in January. Just just chasing down scoops and leads all day long. Hopefully. All, yeah. Well, there, there is no better scoops and leads guy than this guy up here. He's uh, Colin Deaver. Colin, he's out there covering the uh, the 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 uh, miners at UTEP, N M S U. The other Aggies. The other Aggies State. out there. I, I I just it just slipped me. He he used to be, of course, at uh, K Ags and here and down covering the Aggies. I just forgot what your station is out in El Paso. Tell the people where you're at. Well, first of all, I feel like Zordon and Power Rangers with you guys looking up at me. So this is a very awesome position to be in right now. Uh, I'm at KTSM TV. I'm the sports director. I've been here somehow four and a half years. Uh, moved out of College Station in May of 2018 after three years covering AM. and uh, Been here four and a half years covering UTEP, covering New Mexico State, uh, all of our high schools, the El Paso Chihuahuas, El Paso Locomotive soccer team. And uh, yeah, it's been good. So I do miss College Station from time to time. I was there for Travis's wedding last last summer. It was good to get back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I only have to say one thing, and it's morphin' time. Uh, so the reason why we have Colin on this week is, of course, Texas A&M signs out of the portal. Tyron Smith, wide receiver from uh, UTEP. We want to get a little bit of an inside scoop on uh, on that new signing and what A&M got. So Colin... What, 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 who is this player? What, what does he bring to Aggie land and what have you seen from him out in El Paso way? Well, first of all, he is the second uh, receiver in two years from UTEP to transfer to a power five school. Jacob Cowing had a big year for the minors in 2021, I think over 1300 yards receiving and then ended up transferring to Arizona and had almost a thousand yards in the pac 12 this past season. So Tyron Smith kind of, Move, he was he was the number three guy in 2021 and then moved up to that kind of number one receiver spot for UTEP in 2022. And there was a lot of questions uh, coming into the season whether or not he would be able to do that because he is very small. And I mean, he's small by Conference USA standards. So you can imagine what he's going to look like in the SEC at 5'7", 170 pounds. I don't know that he's even that big. Um, but he produced and you can't. You can't say anything other than that. I mean, 71 catches, over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns uh, as the primary deep threat for a UTEP team that was kind of boom or bust in the passing game. All season long, they, sh- they would struggle with shorter routes, medium routes, but they would hit Smith for deep balls at least once or twice a game. They would move them over um, kind of all over the field. They would put them on um, end arounds. They would put them in the slot. They would put them outside. Um they got pretty creative with how they used him. Um, he's he's very small, but he's also very fast. And one thing I've you know you find with like smaller wide receivers, I feel like it, like no matter the level, is obviously they're very used to being small, and they're very used to like figuring out ways to get themselves open throughout their football careers. And I think he's really good at doing that. Um, I think he'll certainly help Texas A and M. I don't know if he'll have a thousand yard season for him, but I certainly think like. He could come in and start day one, be a, be a, you know, a good slot receiver for him, um, get loose on a deep ball or two uh, throughout the year for a couple touchdowns. But um, I think, I think it's a solid pickup for uh, Texas A&M for sure. And like I said, the, I mean, the track record of Jacob Cowan going from UTEP to Arizona and now Tyron Smith, who basically is the same player as Cowan. They're both very small guys kind of playing that slot position. Um, I think bodes well for like why Tyron Smith was getting the offers that he was in the season that he had, where he was one of really two, what you know, threats at the wide receiver position for UTEP, who went five. You know, it's not it wasn't a very good team this year. They went five and seven, and to me, the fact that he was able to produce the way he did, the defense is basically zeroing in on him the entire time, shows like yeah, he's pretty capable. Yeah. What What did uh, for those people who didn't follow UTEP closely? What did UTEP's passing game look like uh i mean of course they were getting the ball to him plenty to be able to get a thousand yards but um comparatively speaking to to what the passing game and, and the kind of system he's coming from what did that look like fairly boomer bust uh like i said they they would throw a lot of deep routes you know when they threw the ball they were they tried to be fairly balanced in terms of their their run pass 
I'm looking at their, at their stats right now. They, they threw the ball 380 times, ran it 464 times, so more run heavy um, than pass. He was playing with two different quarterbacks this past year. Uh, Gavin Hardison started the majority of the season um, and was pretty up and down, completed just 52% of his passes, 11 touchdowns, eight picks. So there was a lot of variance in terms of like, you know, basically how good the quarterback play was for Tyron Smith uh, at the receiver position. I mean, Hardison, they, they, had, they had 15 total touchdown passes the entire year. Smith had seven of them. So that I think that shows you like the amount that he was targeted this year um, with some pretty, I'll, I'll say like mediocre quarterback play. It uh, wasn't what we thought it was going to be coming into the season. Um, and I think Smith exceeded expectations. At least it certainly exceeded my expectations um, for him based on the junior season, or his, his, not his junior season, his, junior season, his first season at Utah. Yeah, so, Colin, here's another question. W- was Tyron Smith used much in, in special teams at all? Uh, you know, it seems like he's a very athletic player, could could be potentially used as a returner. Yeah, I'm, try- I'm trying to think. He did have a little bit of a role as a kick returner in 2021. He, ret- he only returned one uh, this past season, but he had three returns for 64 yards uh, in 2021. That was That was kind of an area of – like a big area of weakness actually for UTEP was like the return game. And I always thought it would have been smart for them to put him back there more um, because he was one of the more elusive and electric players that they had. I think also because of that, they were a little worried about putting him back there on a punt return or a kick return and getting him hurt uh, when he's kind of their biggest threat at the receiving position. Going to Texas A&M where obviously there's a little bit more talent and, you know, there's, you can afford to lose a guy here or there potentially. I, I think that that's certainly something that you might see them do with him. Yeah, that, that would certainly probably be a boost to AM. I mean, you think about it, AM AM doesn't return us on kickoff particularly a ton, but we've seen the last two, two, three years, Devon A chain break out some big ones and in, in pivotal moments. And, uh, you know, you think about when he returned one against Arkansas, obviously the one against the win over Alabama. And, uh, you know, it's it's still uncertain what Anaya Smith's going to do uh, with his future. He's got to make a decision here in the next week or so. But, you know, if, if Anaya does come back, even if he doesn't, still have to compete against Moose Muhammad and uh, could be a guy, you know, you have, a, you have some versatility back there at, at punt returner or kick returner. Think about a guy like uh, Evan Stewart maybe returning some stuff. Probably don't want him back there as much as, as you'd think. Uh, so... I was just curious what what the the prospects were at special teams for Tyron Smith. Yeah, uh, with with Tyron, you know, going back to your time here in College Station, when you say smaller size slot receiver, the the, the first name that pops to mind is a is a Christian Kirk. What what do you think? I know this is purely your speculation of what you've seen, but what do you think the the upside for this guy is in the SEC? He's smaller than Kirk by quite a bit. Like in like. I think when we when we covered Kirk when he was at A and M, like all of us were like, "Oh man, this guy's really small." But he, he was like five eleven. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and and stacked even as a true freshman. Tyron isn't that big, like from a from a height standpoint and also like a muscular standpoint. Like he did a really good job, I thought, uh, coming in his uh, like this last summer into his second season at UTEP when he knew he was going to be kind of the guy to put some muscle on, but. With his frame, there's just only so much that you can do, I think. Um, again, they only list him at 5'7". Like, I would be surprised if he is actually that tall. Mm. Um, and so I, I'm not going to – I don't want to tell people he's going to be Christian Kirk, <laughs> who's, you know, up there with Mike Evans as one of the best two or three receivers the last 15 years for Texas A&M. Um, but, I, you know, could he be a player of, you know, kind of a, that type of player where, like, hey, you need a catch on third and – and eight Tyron Smith is really good at getting himself open. Uh, kind of, a, I guess a guy that I would compare him to like, um, man, who not to Buyo, who was the other guy? Ratley. He's Damien Ratley. Mm. Um, I think he could maybe serve more of that role type of role where he's like your third or fourth receiver. Um, and just, but like Ratley would made some really clutch catches mm-hmm. when he was at Texas A&M, like in really key spots. And I kind of think that that could be Tyron's role in the SEC. There you go. So let, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, this this actually wasn't just your normal transfer portal uh, type thing. It was actually a trade 
because Texas A&M sent Eli Stowers, quarterback, uh, to, to uh, UTEP. Uh, no, New Mexico this? State. Excuse me, New Mexico State. New Mexico State wasn't a this is actually This is actually the completion of the Bradleydale Pivoto trade. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so where do you see Eli Stowers fitting in uh, into the role at, at New Mexico State? That's interesting. So I guess he was playing like tight end at Texas A&M like the last year. Yeah. So he came in as a quarterback, uh, had shoulder problems when he came in. Uh, so he uh, ended up moving over to, to tight end to play there a little bit. And then before this last season actually had the surgery on his shoulder uh, to repair what was going on and they moved him back to quarterback. Uh, he saw like a couple of plays uh, in garbage time against UMass, yeah, I want to say what it was. It was it was not much, but that was when both Haynes King and Max Johnson were hurt. They so had to bring him back to quarterback they, because so, they were so. Thin. Well, he moved back to quarterback that's before true. the start of that's the season, true. but he was the uh, he was the fourth string guy basically, and they he became second when those two guys were hurt. It's all a little bit of time, so he, he hasn't. Actually, he, play, he played a couple of downs against UMass, but he hasn't actually played quarterback since high school. That's interesting. So, all right, so New Mexico State, they ended their season 7-6 and six with a bowl victory over uh, Bowling Green in the quick lane bowl. Like, their quarterback play most of the year was bad, worse than UTEP's, which is saying something, <laughs> uh, but was, was, was bad with Diego Pavia and Gavin Frakes. But Pavia just got on an absolute tear the last portion of the season. Uh, I think he ended the season. It was like the last three games was like 13 total touchdowns, one interception, something, something wild like that. But I'm not sure how sustainable, maybe that's sustainable. That's going to be a big question mark for them going into the next year though, is like, was what he did a flash in the pan or is that really who he is? And if it's a flash in the pan, then Stowers, I think, will play a big role in what they want to do. I mean, if anytime you get like a, a former four-star recruit coming in from a power five school, especially at the quarterback position, like that excites the fan base inherently. I think the Aggie fans, uh, the NMSU Aggie fans are going to be like very excited to see what he can do at the first sign of trouble with Pavia. If he keeps the starting job next season, I think people are going to be clamoring for Stowers. So I would, I would, I would think he'll he'll get a, a look at some point, um, whether it's in spring ball, whether it's in fall camp. I just I just I can't imagine that, you know, he doesn't get a look like you don't bring that guy in. He doesn't come to New Mexico State unless there's some sort of like, hey, we think you're going to, you know, have a shot to play here. So. And then the, uh, the the connections continue because there is a player <laughs> yeah. from the Brazos Valley that's heading out to UTEP as well. Yeah. Joey Lightfoot. He's committed to play at utep i guess he'll sign next week national signing day next wednesday and uh i know utep's on the the recruiting trail for maybe another brazos valley player but for sure it looks like lightfoot's uh going to utep and you know he he's been a force for consol's defensive line the last two years i mean he is a huge kid he he gets into the backfield he's strong he's quick and uh I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he ends up making an impact there for sure. So here's the, the, the other guy is the lineman from college station. Utley. Yeah, is that Jake it? Utley. He he's being recruited by UTEP. Uh, and uh, I don't think he's made a decision yet, but he uh, he's inching closer and it looks like UTEP's among one of his top schools, not to mention last fall, College Station volleyball player Ava Martindale, one of the better players for the Cougars, she signed with UTEP. So who knows? You have at least two going out to El Paso, might have three. So Colin. I think also we talk about we talked about Pivoto like jokingly earlier, but I honestly do think like that's part of why, you know, they're getting they got this D lineman from Consol and might get the Utley kid from College Station because Pivoto's son still goes to college station high is on, is on the football team. Yep. So I honestly think that that is probably a channel that they're, that they're using to their advantage. A- absolutely. Uh, uh, Jake Pivoto, the younger son, you know, he was more of a reserve player for the college station state finalist team this year, but he's probably going to be a guy that they're going to need to, to step up into a bigger role at one of those receiver positions next year with a couple of key guys graduating and moving on. So. Exactly. So I think, that's that's all we got for Colin. Can, can we can we bring up any more 
Brazos Valley to UTEP uh, connections here? Or New Mexico, uh, I mean, New Mexico State? Or Chihuahuas or anything? Well, you know, I mean, El Paso is not a lot in Oklahoma. It's not the center of the universe. <laughs> but I can I can tie things to it pretty pretty well. Uh, it's, a run, it's a running joke that I'm very good at localizing stuff. So, Alex, I, I'm going to let you mostly finish this off with the question that you like to ask everyone, your other beat here at the Eagle. Oh, yeah. Colin, what are the best places to eat in El Paso? Come on now. Oh, uh, we have my personal favorite, Kiki's, which Travis has been, been to. There. Delicious. Yeah, Kiki's is good. Uh, what do you there's get a, at Kiki's, though? Uh, it's a Mexican restaurant, so, I mean, just, what I mean, everything they have is good. <laughs> so I, think, I get I think, them a chocolate plate, which is kind of like, it's like enchiladas with eggs. Okay. Uh, with scrambled eggs. I'm intrigued. Um, it's very good. Kiki's is is, is bomb. Uh, El Cometa, and there, which is just kind of like a tacos only shop. That's my uh, favorite place that we ate at. Place is yeah delicious. Okay. Yeah, here, place here, is very good too. Here's the other question I have. So you know, people think Mexican food in Texas. They think of Tex-Mex. Is is the is the Mexican food in El Paso quite different than what? you know, traditional Tex-Mex you're going to find maybe more central Texas in the triangle. Okay. Yes. It's, it's, it's definitely more traditional Mexican food. Like I can't, it's, it's hard for me to actually eat Tex-Mex now. Mm. Uh, really? It's, yeah, it's just, it, it's just noticeably not as good. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's how I feel about San Antonio and tacos. I lived in San Antonio for one summer and the tacos there are just supreme to anything and tacos anywhere else just don't compare. Especially Austin. Don't let Austin people tell you they're the best tacos. They don't. You sound like somebody who's lived in L.A. once. Oh, I've, I've been to L.A. I have been to L.A. <laughs> I, 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 I was in San Antonio for, Col- for, Colin, for a year. Colin's for a like summer. halfway to L.A. That's what's crazy. <laughs> Colin's in a different time zone. That's El Paso, how Texas is. El Paso oh. is a vastly underrated town. If you haven't been there, you need to go. Agreed. It's, it's amazing. Colin, this is what we're going to close out with. If you didn't know Colin from your time in the Brazos Valley as the sports director for KAGS, you knew him for his circuit around the karaoke bars in town. <laughs> Colin, what is the go-to karaoke song in your life now? Man, I haven't done karaoke. I, maybe since you guys visited, actually. You and David Waxman visited. That might have been actually the last time I did it. Okay. Uh, well, what would it be now? No, that's not true. That's not true. I went, I went in May, and I did Tennessee Whiskey. Okay. Solid, yeah. solid pick. Pipes. Still tearing the house down. You know me. I would, you know, still got it. <laughs> he, he, he needs to do a limited time return to the tap here in College Station. That was uh, that was a go to back in the day. So anyway, yeah. Colin, thanks so much for giving us a little bit of your time. Uh, we'll be back next on the My Aggie Nation podcast to talk a little bit of Aggie men's basketball.